or other things. I have a question on the lab. Question on the lab, sure. Yeah. So when we assume k values, uh, pull them out of the back of the book. And so for yes. determining the O number. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so for the k values, for the BO number, that's just the, the material. material. The copper. Yeah, the copper. So yeah, just from the back of the book is good. OK, let's um, start talking about internal flow again. So we were talking on Friday about the thermal boundary layer development. So we talked about velocity boundary layer development and then moved on to thermal boundary layer development. And we said that um, assuming we have a uniform flow entering a circular tube, it has some temperature and the thermal boundary layer will begin to develop right at the entrance of the tube and it'll continue developing downstream. There's a point where the boundary layers merge, which is the thermally fully developed um, length. So upstream of that uh, position, the thermally fully developed position, is the entrance region downstream, the flow is thermally fully developed. And then we also said, depending on the boundary condition, if you have a constant surface temperature or a constant surface heat flux, the shape of the profile is going to change. And we also said that because you're um, basically continually heating or cooling a finite amount of fluid for internal flow, you have to think about the fact that the mean temperature of the fluid continues to change as you move downstream. So if you have a surface temperature that's higher than the fluid temperature, you're actually continually heating the flow. Um, so unlike the velocity boundary layer, which once you reach the fully developed position, the profile does not change, the temperature profile continues to change downstream. So today we'll talk about how we can define this as being fully developed, even though the temperature and the profile continues to change. So this is internal flow, thermal boundary layer, continued. So let's go ahead and write down that the temperature profile continues to change with x. Downstream of this location where it's fully developed, this x f d comma t. But we can still um, come up with expressions for the place where the boundary layers merge and the length of the uh, entrance region. So just like for the velocity profile, having laminar flow or turbulent flow changes what the entry length is. So for laminar flow, the thermal entry length is, and again, we're gonna express it uh, non-dimensionalized by the diameter. So for laminar flow, that's approximately equal to 0 0.05 times the Reynolds number, times the Prandtl number. And then for turbulent flow, 
it's the same as the velocity boundary layer. So approximately 10 times the diameter is where the exposition where the uh, thermal boundary layer becomes fully developed. All right, so let's talk about what the expression for convection in internal flow is. So for external flow, it's really simple, right? It's just Newton's law of cooling, H A T S minus T infinity, and T S and T infinity are constants, and they're usually known. And all you have to think about is calculating the convection coefficient, H. But for internal flow, the fluid temperature now is this T sub M, this mean temperature that's changing with X. So now you have both H changing with X um, to some extent and the temperature changing with X. So it's not as simple of a matter to calculate the convection. So we'll say Newton's law of cooling for internal flow. And we'll write this on a flux basis for now. So we've got the surface temperature and then the mean temperature of the flow. And this is, uh, we're writing it in terms of a flux because we're just talking about a local value right now, so not over any given length or any given area because the mean temperature um, so far, we just talked about how to define the mean temperature at one X location. So here, this is the local convection coefficient. And this is the mean temperature at a given X. And that's going to change as, as we move downstream. So we can just go ahead and note that this value here changes with x. So if the surface temperature is greater than the mean temperature, then you're going to have heat transfer occurring to the fluid. So the fluid is being heated. And the gradient of the mean temperature with x increases. And then the opposite is obviously true. If the surface temperature is less than the fluid temperature, the fluid will actually be heating the surface. And the mean temperature of the fluid is going to decrease with x. And, and again, remember we're talking about these, um, this occurring within the bounds of our two boundary conditions. So constant surface temperature and constant surface heat flux. So even if you have the fluid heating the surface, you would assume that there's some sort of reservoir such that it's maintaining a constant temperature even though heat transfer is going from the fluid to the surface, just like we did with external flow. Okay, so if our thermal boundary layer, the profile is continuing to develop, continuing to develop as it moves downstream, it's a little tricky to kind of talk about the fully developed conditions. 
as we said, partial T, partial X does not equal zero. So the temperature continues to change as you move downstream, even when you're past the uh, entrance region. But we can achieve a fully developed condition by non-dimensionalizing the velocity or the temperature profile. So a fully developed condition is achieved when partial derivative with respect to x of this dimensionless temperature profile stops changing. So even though the temperature profile itself continues to change as you go downstream, this dimensionless profile does not. So that's the surface temperature minus the temperature at a given R and X location. So this is just one point on the temperature profile in the radial and X locations divided by the surface temperature minus the mean temperature. So when the boundary layers merge, this dimensionless profile, the shape of it stops changing with X. And that's how the boundary layer becomes fully developed. We're not gonna go through all the math to show why this is true. Um, it's a little bit of a long derivation, but you can look in the book if, you're, if you wanna read more about it. And then you can also show that in a thermally fully developed flow, H does not change with X. So H is constant. But we should note that in the entry region, H is a function of X. So the good news is once you reach a fully developed condition, although the mean temperature is continuing to change, the convection coefficient the local convection coefficient is constant with X. So you really only have to worry about um, the mean temperature changing. Okay. So let's talk about how to calculate the mean temperature. So now, like we said, to calculate even just the rate of convection heat transfer, we need to first calculate the mean temperature because it's now changing with X. And so we need to figure out how to calculate the mean temperature and the convection coefficient. So we're gonna talk about the mean temperature first and then we'll have expressions for the convection coefficient later on. So, you may or may not remember from thermo, the simplified steady flow thermal energy equation. And this is applicable because we're talking about a specific amount of fluid that is moving through a confined area 
and its temperature is changing. So this equation, kind of the right hand side of it, um, represents the thermal energy. So it's m dot Cp times T out minus T in. So right now we're just kind of writing this generically. And that represents the, the, the right hand side represents the thermal energy of a fluid or the enthalpy of an ideal gas that's carried by a fluid. So if you just think of like m dot Cp T at a given cross section, you're kind of looking at okay, how many joules of energy per second are passing this point in, in the tube. Um, so that's the thermal energy that's carried by the flow. And then if you look at it written out like this, this is saying, okay, the thermal energy that is <coughs> passing through the cross section at some outlet, we're saying this outlet temperature, minus the thermal energy that's passing through the cross section at the inlet, is going to be equal to the rate of thermal energy lost between those two cross sections. Does that make sense? Okay, so the amount of energy passing a cross section in a second, and then we're just subtracting that, and that has to be equal to the amount of energy that was either lost or gained between those two sections that we're picking as the end of our control, or the beginning and end of our control volume. Okay, so we'll say this is thermal energy slash enthalpy. carried by a fluid. Okay, so this equation assumes that the thermal energy um, or that the temperature across the inlet and the outlet cross section or whichever cross section that you're considering is uniform. So in thermo you just kind of made that assumption and you were given a temperature at the inlet and the outlet. But you know from heat transfer now that the profile is actually, you know, has some kind of parabolic shape and the temperature it actually has to be represented by a mean temperature at the cross section. So we'll say this assumes temperature is uniform at a cross section. which is not true if convection is occurring. <coughs> so just like we defined the mean velocity, where if you multiply the mean velocity times the uh, density in the area, it would be equal to the actual mass flux that was moving through that cross section. We're going to define the mean temperature such that if you multiply it by the, um, the m dot, the mass rate, and Cp, it's equal to the actual rate of thermal energy that's moving across that cross section. So that's how the thermal, the mean temperature is going to be defined. So mean velocity defined in terms of kind of a constant mass flow rate and the mean temperature defined in terms of um, what the th actual thermal energy advected across a given cross section is. So we'll say we define T sub M such that M dot Cp T sub M 
is the actual rate of thermal energy the actual rate of thermal energy advection integrated over a cross section So we're going to consider fluid at a constant flow rate. Through a pipe. And we're going to neglect conduction in the axial direction, so neglect any heat transfer via conduction through the fluid in the direction of fluid flow. And then the heat transfer that occurs between an inlet cross section and an outlet cross section is going to be due to just convection between the fluid and the pipe surface. So now we can cast this equation and say, okay, the convection heat rate between some inlet and some outlet now is equal to m dot cp the mean temperature at the outlet minus the mean temperature at the inlet. So we've taken kind of the generic form of the equation that we wrote up here and then restricted it to say the heat transfer that is occurring between an inlet and an outlet in the fluid flow is only due to convection and then because these temperatures are actually not uniform at a cross section, we are representing them by this mean temperature that still gives us the actual rate of thermal energy advected at a cross section. Okay, so we need a way to calculate the mean temperature. We have kind of written down some equations that use the mean temperature, but we haven't actually figured out how to come up with an expression for it. So to do that, we will apply the first law to a differential element. And then unsurprisingly, you all should know the drill by now, we'll come up with a differential equation that is uh, when solved for a given boundary condition will give us an expression for the temperature as a function of x, the mean temperature. Okay, so we have a pipe. It has some flow rate, some constant flow rate, m dot. And then this is the inlet that we're defining, the inlet cross section, i in the outlet cross section. So variables associated with the inlet have the subscript I and with the outlet have the subscript O. And then we'll define some differential element within the pipe. And it has some length dx and then upstream there's going to be a mean it's going to have a mean temperature over the cross section and then downstream the mean temperature is going to be the upstream temperature plus however that has changed over this uh, differential length 
So Tm plus D T sub n. And then we said heat transfer is only due to convection between the fluid and the pipe, or the, the surface. So the differential convection rate is equal to the surface, the surface flux, the local flux right at that location across that dx times the perimeter times dx. So this is just another expression for, um, you know, heat rate is flux times area. So this is just flux, and then this is that differential surface area. So the perimeter times the differential length. So if we plug that into this equation up here, the differential convection rate, so the heat transfer rate just across this small area, is m dot Cp. And now the outlet mean temperature is T sub m plus D T sub m. And the inlet mean temperature is T sub m. that reduces to m dot cp d t sub m. And then we also said, so this is kind of, um, uh, so this is the expression from the flow rate equation. And then we also said that the differential convection can be written in terms of the flux. This Q sub S times P times DX. So now we can set these two expressions equal to each other. So the flux times the differential surface area equal to m dot cp times the change in mean temperature across the differential element. And now we have dtm and dx, which is what we're looking for, how the mean temperature changes as a function of x. So we can rearrange to get that on one side. So dtm dx is equal to the surface, surface flux times the perimeter over m dot cp. So now we have a differential equation that tells us how the mean temperature changes as a function of x. We can apply boundary conditions, solve it, and then get expressions for the temperature as a function of x, the mean temperature as a function of x. We're going to reduce this a little bit just so we can take out this um, flux variable here. This is just the convection rate equation, right? So Q equals HA times delta T, but we've divided out the A, so it's on a flux basis. And now TS minus TM, basically surface minus T infinity, the fluid temperature, but that's now the mean temperature. And if we plug that into the differential equation, we have P over M dot specific heat, all that times the convection coefficient, and then times the temperature difference. Okay, these three values that make up this first part here, the perimeter, the mass flux, 
um, or the mass flow rate and the specific heat are typically constant with x. So we're assuming cross, constant cross-section. None of these things change with x. So kind of thinking about what are we going to have to worry about when we're doing, when we're solving our differential equation. H is constant with x when it's fully developed. But again, it changes with x when you're in the entry region. Um, T sub s, the surface temperature, that's going to depend on the boundary condition, right? If you define your boundary condition as being a constant surface temperature, then it's going to be constant. But if it's a constant heat flux, which is the other boundary condition we're considering, then the surface temperature is going to change with x. So that depends on the boundary condition. And then the mean temperature is going to always change with x. Okay, so let's talk about our two different boundary conditions and how we can get expressions for the mean temperature as a function of x. So the first boundary condition is a constant surface heat flux boundary condition. And this boundary condition is actually simpler than the constant surface temperature boundary condition. <laughs> so we'll write down expressions for both the mean temperature and then the um, rate of convection heat transfer. So remember we said the rate of convection depends on the mean temperature. So, okay, now we need to figure out an expression for the mean temperature so we can actually figure out what this convection rate is. So for constant surface heat flux, um, it's actually pretty simple. Just what we wrote down previously as the surface heat flux, which now we're assuming that's known because that's our boundary condition, times the perimeter times the length, so just times the surface area. So the flux times the surface area. And so we can actually calculate it for this boundary condition without knowing the mean temperature because that's the boundary condition that we're given. And now, the expression for the mean temperature is T sub M of X is equal to T sub M comma I, so the inlet mean temperature, plus the flux times the perimeter over M dot CP times X. And this is pretty simple for a constant surface flux because this whole quantity right here is constant, doesn't vary with x. So T sub m varies linearly with x for this boundary condition. And you should be able to see that just from the equation. This is a constant, so you've just got your classic mx plus b linear equation. So T sub m varies linearly with x. Okay, let's talk about constant surface temperature. 
which is a little more complicated of a boundary condition. So because the mean temperature, um, because we need the mean temperature to calculate the convection rate, unlike for the heat flux, we're gonna write down the mean temperature expression first. And this is T sub S minus T sub M as a function of X. So we're gonna write it non-dimensionalized over T sub S minus the mean inlet temperature is equal to the exponential of negative PX over M dot CP times H bar. And so this is the average H between inlet and X. So whatever X you're um, looking at, whatever X location you're looking at, it could be the end of the pipe, somewhere in the middle. This is the average H between the inlet and that X location. And then this is the mean temperature at that X location. Okay, so now this temperature difference, T sub S minus T sub M decays exponentially with X. So as X is increasing, this um, quantity right here has a negative in front of it. So that's um, decreasing, and then that's causing the exponential to decrease. This creates a little bit of a problem for coming up with an expression for the convection heat rate, because you've got kind of a exponentially decreasing mean temperature or mean temperature difference. So we'll write down what this is equal to, the convection heat transfer rate. So Q convection is H bar A sub S times delta T L sub M or L M. And this delta T L M is the log mean temperature difference. So if you have a temperature that is decaying linearly over a distance or over time, you can basically calculate the average of that temperature and use that to solve for the convection heat transfer because it's the same as integrating, so if you integrate over a linear function, it's going to be the same as if you take the average of that linear decay. But since this is exponentially decreasing, we can't just take the average. We have to actually integrate over um, the decaying function. And we do that by taking this log mean temperature difference. So delta T L M is defined as defined as this delta T out <coughs> minus delta T in over natural log of delta T out over delta T in. And then this delta is just equal to the 
surface temperature minus the outlet temperature or inlet temperature, for example. And then the A sub S here, of course, is the surface area, so perimeter times length, which we've written down several times before. All right, um, so today I'm actually gonna stop lecture here and a couple things. First of all, I am gonna real quick double check this definition in the book. I didn't write it in my notes, so I'm gonna make sure it's right and not flipped around. And the second thing is, we're gonna do a short mid-quarter assessment. Um, just very brief, we have a uh, short form. So this is based off of the mid-quarter assessment that engineering, teaching, and learning does. Um, so front and back, please um, fill it out honestly. And I do want you to evaluate the whole class. So that's me, the TAs, the labs, the assignments, the lectures, everything. And then um, I'm gonna check this definition real quick. And then Shin is gonna come in and collect them when you're done. So could one of you guys kind of distribute these real quick? Do you mind doing that while I check the, the book? Thanks. It's obviously optional. If you really don't want to do it, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is right. So generically, delta T is TS minus T sub M. So the surface temperature minus the mean temperature. Good. 